Good morning. Recently I reached 70,000 subscribers, uh, which I'm very happy for. And uh, as tradition holds, this means I'm doing a Q&A video. And I asked you guys a couple of days ago on Instagram and in the YouTube community tab uh, to ask me some questions. And uh, I'm gonna pick some random questions uh, from these and answer them. And that is the concept of this video. Do you have any tips on staying motivated to go out and shoot? Hmm. I think that my best tips for this, I already made a video about my best methods to become inspired. And uh, I think that ties uh, very neatly into this. Basically, I make sure to get enough sleep, I exercise regularly, uh, I run as often as I can and as often as my body allows. Uh, I um, yeah try to just uh, stay out of stress, just to keep myself calm. And if I take care of myself like this, then for me at least, inspiration comes automatically. And also, of course, I watch some other photography YouTubers and um, follow my favorite photographers on Instagram and I listen to some photography podcasts and these things also often give me inspiration and motivation uh, to go out and shoot. Uh, but I think most of my ideas from photo to photo walks like uh, uh, for example, my most recent video that I'm working on is a photo walk at 1 20th of a second in shutter speed. That was an idea that came when I was out running. And for whatever reason, when I'm out running or walking, that kind of kicks in the endorphins in the body. And then I get lots of good ideas and uh, inspiration. So um, exercise and sleep, I think, is my best answer to stay inspired and motivated. Can all cameras take good macro photos with the right lens or is there any specs in camera that makes it good at macro photos? Um, yeah, I think pretty much any camera made in the last 10 to 15 years can take beautiful macro photos that is on the level that you see from professional <laughs> macro photographers. The camera is not really the key thing here, the key thing is just to have a lens with good magnification. And most sensors out there are good enough. Then I think that if you're buying a new camera today to do macro photography, I would urge you to get a mirrorless camera and not a DSLR. Uh, the difference is that the mirrorless camera uh, has an electronic viewfinder, so uh, that makes it possible to do stuff like focus magnification and uh, Fo what's it called? Fo focus peaking. Yeah, sorry, I lost the word. Focus peaking in the viewfinder, and that makes it a bit easier to do macro photography. But there are plenty of really, really good macro photographers who use DSLRs, so uh, it's definitely possible. If you were to pick one lens for macro photography and use it for the rest of your life, which one would it be? I think my choice would be between the Laowa 90mm and the Laowa 85mm. Both of these are really great and uh, I think they are the two best macro lenses for full frame macro photography. And I'm not really sure uh, which one I would pick. Um, if I would have to use it for the rest of my life I guess I would pick the 90mm because it is a bit more flexible with the 2.8 aperture. Uh, if I would be using an APS-C camera for the rest of my life, I would pick the Laowa 65mm, I think. And I, if I would be using a Micro Four Thirds camera for the rest of my life, I would pick the Laowa 50mm. So yeah, that's my answer. I have not seen you talking about Olympus cameras that many macro people use. Have I missed it or do you have an opinion on them? Um, no, I don't have an opinion on them. The simple reason I haven't uh, been talking about them is I never owned an Olympus camera. And it's not because I hate them or don't want to try them, it's just that yeah, I haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm sure that I someday will buy an Olympus camera and do macro photography with it and then I will tell you guys all about it. 
if you would start your YouTube channel now, but uh, knowing all the things that I've learned all these years, what would be the top 10 things you would do and why? And what would be the top 10 things you would not do and why? Oh, um, that's a big question. Uh, top 10 things maybe I won't be able to make a list, but um, I think uh, a common trap when you are a beginner in YouTube is that you try to do exactly as uh, the big guys on YouTube, like Peter McKinnon or whatever, you try to emulate them and copy what they are doing. But I think that the key to success and the key to your own happiness making YouTube videos is to find your own way of doing it. Do videos the way that you like doing it and uh, the way that you think is good. Like make the videos you would want to watch. I think that's a, a really good thing to try to think about. And um, listen to your audience and that's all that matters. You don't need to copy the, the big YouTubers. Of course you could watch them and get some inspiration but you should not strive to be exactly like them. Because they are being themselves. And no one can beat them at being themselves, and no one can beat you at being yourself. So, be yourself, I guess. Who are your favorite YouTube photographers that you wouldn't miss a video from? Um, I don't have any photographers that I follow that closely that I wouldn't miss a video. But I have a few that I watch most videos that I make. Uh, the first that comes to mind is my friend Matthew Stern. He has a channel about experimental photography and weird lenses and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I really love his videos and I find them interesting. Uh, also, there is a Swedish guide called Matthias Burling. Uh, I watch almost all of his videos. He's not really that active right now, but I guess he will be at some point in the future. Uh, he often finds older, cheaper cameras and lenses and uh, reviews them. Uh, like forgotten, overseen equipment. And he has found so many interesting cameras and lenses that I have found out about uh, thanks to him. Uh, so I really love his channel. Uh, there are a few more, but those are the two first that come to mind that I can recommend you to look into. What's your favorite horror film and why? The first that comes to mind is uh, a film by Robert Rodriguez, Rod Rodriguez uh, and it's called Planet Terror. And it's kind of a almost funny, like it's a, a bit comical <laughs> horror movie and I really love it because it's made in an old school fashion and it's uh, really overdone in a funny way. I love that film and now, I, now when I'm talking about it I want to see it again. Um, but maybe the question is like, what film was good as in I got scared? Hmm. I remember when um, I watched the Blair Witch Project for the first time. Uh, I was at a friend's place out here close by in the woods. And some other friend had found like a, a video on the internet. And no one really knew where it was coming from or like who made it or anything and it was the Blair Witch Project <laughs> and like we had no idea it was an upcoming like uh, cinema film uh, so I remember when I was biking home through the forest that night after seeing that film in the dark <laughs> I was pretty scared <laughs> How do you know the name of the species you take pictures of? Uh, well, in many cases I don't. I'm really not that good at insects or actually I'm not super interested in learning about them either. I just like photographing them. <laughs> uh, but usually I ask uh, my followers and you guys are really good at telling me exactly what the species is. Uh, but uh, if you don't have lots of followers on social media that can tell you this, I would recommend uh, uh, the app iNaturalist. It's called, I think and where you can submit photos and experts in identifying uh, insects will uh, tell you. Also I've heard people say that Google Lens is really good at this. Google Lens is an app that you can use to 
take pictures of anything, not just insects. You can take pictures of cars or flowers or whatever, and the Google Lens will try to find out what it is uh, for you. So that might be worth trying. Do you ever have the desire to get back into the tech industry? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I loved working in the tech industry. I was an entrepreneur and software developer for many years. Uh, it was a great adventure. I learned so many things, but I kind of feel a bit done there. Uh, I feel like I've learned most of the things there is to learn and that when I'm working with those things nowadays, I'm not really feeling like I'm discovering new and exciting things like I do in photography and YouTube. Uh, so I think you always need that aspect to feel like you are excited about learning new stuff and uh, yeah, I, I feel kind of done with the tech industry even though I can definitely see myself working a bit more there if I would need to maybe if I would need some extra money or something uh, I mean uh, it's not a bad industry uh, but I prefer YouTube and photography if I could pick and I can pick right now <laughs> so yeah any advice for starting a YouTube channel well it would have to be the advice that I just uh, told as an answer to the other question but also one thing I would advise you to do is to uh, go to the channel of Paddy Galloway he is a YouTube consultant and he kind of specializes in uh, learning about what makes YouTube videos successful go watch a few of his videos and you will learn some very important things about the YouTube algorithm and how to get views and uh, you don't need to follow these like uh, slavishly but it's good to have heard about these things so you have them in the back of your head when you're making your videos and you're more likely to get success on YouTube. How can I get revenue from macro photography? That's a good question. And actually I made a whole video uh, answering that, all the ways I know to make money from macro photography. So um, yeah, just search for macro photography, make money or something and you will find my video about it. A question from Matthew Stern that I talked about earlier. <laughs> What's your secret to make two videos a week? Um, I think my secret is that <laughs> Uh, during the first five years of this YouTube channel, I've always worked very time constrained due to small kids, part time jobs. I have had very limited time each week to make YouTube videos. So I kind of had to learn to become extremely efficient at making them. And uh, I think that helps now that I have more time to do YouTube videos I can easily do several per week without it feeling uh, very, very hard and I think that is because I've slimmed down the whole production process uh, to make every step very fast so in a pinch I could easily film a video in 30 minutes I could edit it in one hour and be done with it <laughs> even though most of the time I spend maybe seven eight or even more hours per video I make. How and when did you know you were ready to make the jump to do full-time YouTube and quit your job? Um, yeah, it was back in 2020 and my channel was doing really, really good at the time. I didn't know back then that it was like a temporary peak and that I would then uh, <laughs> lose views after that. Uh, but then I felt like, okay, uh, I'm having a lot of views, I could make a lot of money from this if I would work full time with it. Uh, could probably almost make a living, but also I had money saved. I had money saved so I could live for like four years uh, with my current in YouTube income. And I think that is important. Uh, if you quit your job to do YouTube full time and you're not yet making enough money to live on it you definitely need a buffer you should have money so you can live for at least a couple of years um, and uh, I think that's good advice in general in life always have a buffer so you can live on saved money for a couple of years you never know when you want to quit your job to do something new and it's a great feeling of freedom to have that money to be able to do whatever you want uh, for a couple of years. 
So yeah, save up some money and uh, when you have, uh, I don't know, a few thousand views per day on YouTube, I think you might be ready to quit your job to do YouTube full time. Depends of course completely on what kind of channel you have and how much money you make from AdSense and what kind of sponsors you have and so on, but yeah. Oh, starting to rain. I hope it will not last long. <laughs> Uh, how did you become interested in macro photography? Uh, well, I got very passionate about photography in general back in 2016 or so. Yeah, and um, I tried all different genres during that time. I tried street photography, landscape, wildlife, uh, all kinds of photography, portraits. Uh, and I was uh, very passionate about uh, trying to find like my style or my thing. Uh, so one day I was uh, browsing YouTube randomly and I found a video, I think it was like a video on the B&H photo channel on YouTube, uh, which was like an hour long introduction to macro photography. And uh, I got really inspired by that video, it seemed like lots of fun and I Loved how you can get beautiful results, like in midday uh, sunlight. Um, and then I started browsing even more and I found Thomas Shahan's YouTube channel. And as you, many of you know, he takes very beautiful macro photos. And then I was hooked. I got obsessed. The next day I went into town and bought a macro lens. And uh, ever since then I've been really passionate about macro photography. How long have you been photographing? Well, um, yeah, since 2016. But I guess uh, my interest in photography was kind of growing before that. I was doing photography with my phone and posting to Instagram and I kind of started discovering uh, around 2013, 2014 that I loved the feeling of taking a photo that I found beautiful and applying some filters and posting it. So I think Instagram was probably my introduction to the interest in photography. And actually before Instagram there was an app called Hipstamatic. I think that was the very first one where you can apply um, retro looking filters and make your photos look nice and cool. Um, yeah, that was probably my first encounter with uh, like a real passion for photography and, and starting to love it. The best way to start doing macro when you have no macro lenses. Uh, I would definitely buy uh, extension tubes. That is the easiest way uh, to get into macro photography. You get very nice looking results and it's very cheap. Uh, you could also try a reversing ring or reverse adapter and uh, preferably combine that with extension tubes and you have something great. But extension tubes is uh, the easiest, uh, most straightforward way to get into macro photography. What are your goals for next year? Uh, my goals is to um, make as many YouTube videos as possible, have fun, provide lots of valuable content to you guys and try to increase my income uh, so much so that I um, make more money from YouTube each month than I spend on rent and food and all the other expenses I have. Uh, I'm definitely not there yet but uh, I'm working towards it. And if you want to help me please go support me on Patreon. Every Patreon supporter means so much to me and uh, yeah, I'm trying to grow my Patreon supportership uh, because that is a really good uh, source of income, I think, to help this channel stay independent and honest. Planning any photo trips in Sweden that people can join? Yeah, I was uh, thinking about this a um, few weeks ago that it would be interesting if I would hold workshops about macro photography so uh, I could have a small group of people go out in the field do some macro photography and uh, that could also be a nice way for me to make some extra income. Uh, I haven't decided definitely yet to do it um, but I might maybe do it next summer. Uh, we'll see. Would you be interested in uh, paying some money to travel to Sweden and do a course like that? Let me know in the comments.
Do you have a dream travel destination for macro photography? This is a common question that I get a lot and uh, no I don't really have a specific one. I'm actually pretty happy with just taking macro photos here in Sweden even though the insects aren't that interesting. Um, for me it's more about the craft and developing in the craft. Trying to take beautiful uh, photos even with uh, boring Swedish insects. Uh, I think that is the challenge I love and that I find exciting. Uh, of course it is always exciting to do macro photography in some other place than where you live. I really love that and uh, I intend to do more of that. But no, I haven't really done research on like the best spots in the world to do macro photography. If you have tips on good places to do macro photography where there are lots of interesting insects, please let me know in the comments. I would be very interested to make a list of this. Uh, so I have that list for the future when I'm able to travel. Um, yeah, I, I saw a video by Thomas Shehan where he was in the cloud forest somewhere in like, was it like Peru or something? And uh, that seemed like an exciting place. At the same time, I'm a bit scared of like big spiders and snakes and stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm really not sure how much I would love doing that. But yeah, I, I, I guess I would like to go to some place like that someday just to try it. All right, guys, the rain is getting a bit more intense. <laughs> I think I will end here. Thank you so much for watching and see you very soon again in another video about macro photography. Bye bye.